Revisiting what is possibly the best anime deck in Masterdale right now, Raid Raptors, this time with Kaliuga. We have made a video on Raid Raptors before, but I'm going to be honest, I kind of rushed into that video. I was so excited uh, to play with all of these awesome looking new cards uh, that I neglected my due diligence. I built a list, I played the game, I won my games, and then I made a video. That was it. Uh, what I failed to realize was the, the significance of some of the contextual knowledge and information behind the deck. And I have made a number of changes to my list, a number of changes to my ideas and play style. But number one, I have changed the end board objective of this deck when I am playing it. Now, whenever we're playing, instead of aiming for just a bunch of big towers that are just, you know, sort of haha funny, you can't touch me. Now we're strategically aiming to utilize and maximize the interruption that Raid Rothers has to offer. Specifically, our end board is going to be uh, our field wipe into the Raising Rebellion Falcon. So we're going to have the materials necessary for a rank up magic Raid Raptors force into the Raising Rebellion Falcon to wipe the opponent's board. And we're also going to be aiming to set up the Kali Yuga on every single end board. One car combos, two car combos, extenders, anything you want as long as you can get in to two level fours or even just one copy of the Tribute Lanius, you will be able to summon Kali Yuga and the Raising Rebellion Falcon. And if you don't get interrupted too heavily, you may even be able to have chain block tools such as the Rusty Knights of Bardish in order to protect you from Ubel, one of the few cards that can still manipulate your deck against you. Again, admittedly, Kali Yuga does actually take care of most of that problem, but it is definitely uh, worth noting. So. This is the list. Uh, we did cut the Fuzzy Lanius. The Fuzzy Lanius was the card that was holding us back the most. I didn't realize initially that it was a full Raid Raptor lock. Most cards in this deck lock you into Dark and or Exceeds. Actually, I don't even know if there's any Exceed locks. It might just be Darks. But uh, you typically get locked in the Dark, which is A-OK. -okay. Uh, because if you're playing it smart, there's a bunch of really powerful Dark monsters you can play. And you can really get a lot out of it. Uh, the Fuzzy Lanius, while an awesome card in pure Raid Raptors, in a version that's looking to utilize... Things such as SP Little Knight, uh, Kali Yuga, Typhon, uh, it becomes a bit of a problem. So we're not playing Fuzzy, and I don't even really think you should play Fuzzy. As much as I normally say there's a whole bunch of different ways of playing it, I really do feel like if you're not playing the deck like or pretty close to this, you're really missing out on a lot. Like the Kali Yuga is a huge, huge part of what I believe make, makes Raid Raptors great. I, I do. I don't think there's very much substitute for it. I think if you're not playing the Kali Yuga line, you're just actively putting yourself at a disadvantage because the deck does it so well, so effectively. It doesn't bleed anything out of the core strategy, and it just is so impactful that it's impossible to pass up, right? Uh, so that's my thoughts. Uh, what we're going to be doing in this video, I am going to show off a one card combo that gets you to the end board I just described, where we've got the Rising Rebellion Falcon uh, uh, Field Wipe, we've got the Kali Yuga, and we've got the sort of Rusty Bardish and all that fun stuff, as well as the Ultimate Falcon. I should mention the Ultimate Falcon's on that end board. So you end on two towers, a Field Wipe, and a Cold Wave, or whatever it's called. Basically, King Calamity. They can't play cards. It's better than King Calamity, actually, but you know the idea. So I'm going to show you that combo. You can get to that combo using one copy of Tribute Lanius, which is the one I'm going to show you. Although most of the time, you're going to be using two cards to get there because some of the two card combos not only are just as consistent, if not more consistent, uh, they're actually typically better uh, because there are certain things you will sacrifice whenever you're going for the one card line. Um, basically, bear in mind, it's one copy of Tribute Lanius or any two birds, right? So... That's what we're going to do. Then I've got some replays and I'm going to go over the deck list in detail at the end of the video. So stick around for that if you want to know more about the actual cards we're playing and why we are playing them. Uh, first of all, of course, if you're interested in seeing more content as it comes out, make sure you're subscribed to the channel to catch it as it comes out as often as we can upload it and like this video to let me know what you are thinking. Again, if you have any ideas, suggestions, anything like that at all, leave them down below. Uh, we are still trying to improve the quality of these videos as we're going. I think we're learning a lot and getting better, but every a little bit of feedback and suggestion definitely helps a lot so if you've got something leave it down there but i'm not going to bend your ear let's get into that combo as much as you can accomplish this combo using basically any two level four birds uh, i know a lot of people don't like using the brains and want a one card solution which i am going to provide 
So what we're going to do is we're going to ignore the fact that the actual optimal plan is hand as normal summon Raider's Wings, which is with Strangolanius. Gonna ignore that. It's not real. It's pretend. Uh, we're instead gonna normal summon the Tribute Lenius, which is the one card combo basically of this deck. And uh, we're gonna activate its effect. We're gonna send to the graveyard another one of our Raider Raptor cards. We're gonna send the Mimicry. Mimicry then in graveyard is gonna activate, banishing itself from the graveyard uh, to grab you a Strangle Lenius. Any extender really at this stage does it, and it kind of pains me to use Strangle Lenius in this way because it's such a good card if you manage to use its effect later in the combo. But, one card combo, so we're doing it. We're going to go Strangle and he's here summoning itself out to the field. Now we've got two level fours, and we're going to go into the Raider's Knight. And this is why basically any two level fours can do this. The reason Tribute Lanius is a one card method of doing it is purely because it can get your hands on another um, level four bird without compromising your combo. So there are actually other cards that can go into like Raider's Knight and such by themselves, but they would compromise the rest of your combo later. So for example, Noir Lanius can actually do it in and of itself as well. Uh, but you want to use Noir Lanius' effect later in the combo for something else. So this is like the one card way of doing it that doesn't actually compromise your combo in any way. Uh, so that's why it's so significant. So we're going to detach the material for our Raider's Knight. We're going to go into our Brave Strix. Anyone who has played Raider Raptors before kind of gets this part of the line, even if you're not playing a Kaliuga variant. Uh, it is fairly similar up until a certain point. So we're going to start detaching cards here. Uh, it doesn't matter largely what you detach for the most part. So long as before you use this effect, you have a Winged Beast on this card's material, which you almost always will, unless you're me. Uh, in my last video. So now we're going to go for our skip force targeting the Brave Strix. We're going to level this thing up into the Arsenal Falcon. Perfect. Uh, Arsenal Falcon then is going to activate. We're going to detach a material from the Arsenal Falcon. Uh, it doesn't really matter which. We're going to detach one. We're going to special summon from the deck the Noir Lanius that I just mentioned. And the Royal Lanius then is going to activate, targeting itself to add a... Basically, it adds a Raider Raptor monster that is not the same level as the targeted monster uh, to your hand. So we're going to add the level 3 Heal Eagle from our deck to your hand. Uh, now we're going to activate the Heal Eagle's effect. We're going to special summon itself out to the field. And now we've got two monsters on board we can use to go into the Waystrix. Our Arsenal Falcon and our Heal Eagle. Going into the Waystrix. Perfect. Uh, now we're going to activate the effect of the Waystrix as well as the Arsenal Falcon. Perfect. Now the Heal Eagle does serve a special purpose for pure end boards. Uh, we actually don't, uh, I personally don't utilize this card's effect. You could if you wanted to end with multiple towers on your opening board, but I honestly think that's a real waste of resources, so I typically don't do that. Uh, but either way, now we're going to use Arsenal Falcon's effect to go into the Ultimate, uh, Ultimate Falcon which is awesome, 3,500, totally unaffected by any other card's effects. Now we're going to go away Strix as well. We're going to special summon out uh, the Raider's Wing from our deck. So Raider's Wing, very important that you summon the Raider's Wing that's going to trigger way Strix's other effect to summon out, or sorry, to grab, sorry, our magic uh, Raider Raptor's Force, um, Raise Rank Up Magic. Ridiculously long names. Now we're going to go Raider's Wing and the Warlenius into the Force Strix. And this is why grabbing the Raider's Wing is super important. Now we're going to go for Strix. We're going to detach the Raider's Wing. Uh, we're going to special uh, try add from deck to hand another bird. We're going to add the Simorg. This doesn't have to add a Raider Raptor. It's any level 4 Darkwing Beast, which is very flexible. Now we can use the Raider's Wing. We're going to detach a material from... You can either detach a material from the ult Ultimate Falcon off of this, or you can just activate the Ultimate Falcon's effect, whichever suits you more. Um, we're going to detach off the four Strix here. Summoning out our Raider's Wing. Um, we're going to trigger some Morgue's effect, which is going to summon itself out to the field now that we just summoned a Darkwing Beast. Now we're going to activate the Ultimate Falcon's effect. You need to have Arsenal Falcon in Grave, is the main sort of crux. Get rid of this card. You can either do it from Raider's Wing, or you can just do it like I just did. Either way, it doesn't matter as long as it's in the graveyard. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the Gaga Gaga -ga -ga Magician. Using these two level fours, we're going to go into the Magician right here. Uh, activating its effect, we're going to detach a material, we're going to detach the Raider's Wing, and we're going to summon back the level 7 Arsenal Falcon. Perfect. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go into Bardish. So we're going to use the Magician and our Waystrix. We're going to go into the Phantom Knights of Rusty Bardish. Perfect. Activating Bardish then, we're going to send the Raider's Wing from the deck to the graveyard, and we're going to play the Phantom Knights Rank Up spell. 
And this is basically the end board. So what we have, and, and this is the important thing you really need to do. I know a lot of people will want you to go into like raise rank up magic and do all of this to get another Raising Rebellion Falcon on your opening board. And then to use the Heal Eagle to reset this so you can use it again. And that can invent misplays and I honestly think it's a gross uh, misuse of resources in the very 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 few matchups where your opponent is actually organically able to deal uh, with a Rising Rebellion Falcon uh, they will often be able to deal with multiple uh, so I, I prefer just basically saving my resources for a longer game realistically if the Rising Rebellion Falcon is going to be enough to beat somebody then one of them will be enough to beat that somebody I don't need two of them Two of them's overkill. I'd rather keep one in my back pocket for later in the game if they happen to get rid of them somehow. I would rather do that. So we're not going to go through the whole res up, rag up magic lane and all of that because I, I just don't think it's worth it. I think it's a bad idea. Um, literally the only circumstances that it helps you under is specifically Lava Golem and or... Um, it doesn't even really help you with Sphere Mode. Like, it's specifically Lava Golem. A Kaiju is not going to out you. Uh, sphere Mode is still going to out you, so it only helps against Lava Golem. And this is the board. So the way this board works, basically, uh, we're going to go into our opponent's turn. We're gonna, I'm going to show you how it works. Of course, this is a bot, so they're not going to be super responsive. Um, we've got our ultimate falcon, which is basically totally unaffected by everything. And now we're going to go for the raise rank up magic. So we're going to activate our rank up magic. We're going to target our first tricks. We're going to target our two raid raptor exceed monsters in grave. Uh, then we're immediately going to summon out the raising rebellion falcon, and we're going to do so right over here. And you can do this next part a number of different ways. You can wait, you can do it right away. Basically what you want to do is you're going to use the Raising Rebellion Falcon right away. Uh, if you're against Ubel, and the reason you summon it under Bardish is important specifically. If you're against Ubel, you chain block using Rusty so that they don't negate the, the Raising uh, Rebellion Falcon. The Ubel Fusion can still negate this guy, so we can. That's like one of the very few cards that can because it doesn't negate the effect, it changes the effect. Uh, and it forces the player to do something, not the card. So you do want to chain block just to make sure that your opponent is definitely not going to use you bell to stop your um, exceed board wipe. Well, insert here, apparently don't chain the quick play spell to the summon of the Rising Rally of Valka because it will, be, it will get negated. Um, I'm not overly sure why that is, uh, but it does. If I find out why, or if you know why, let me down below. Personal Falcon, and we're going to use it to summon out Kaliuga. Just like that. Kaliuga instantly negates everything else on the field. Of course, your Rebellion Falcon and such is unaffected because they're unaffected. Uh, so now we're going we're gonna to go for the um, Kaliuga. We're going to wipe the board. Uh, we can detach a material to, you know, destroy all the back row and such. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So in Raising Rebellion, you use Kaliuga, lock down your opponent, wipe the board, all that fun stuff. And because of Kaliuga, your opponent basically can't play the game. Not that complicated. Uh, so, on top of having the ability to use Kaliuga to totally stop your opponent from playing the game, the deck still has the ability to go through all of the standard um, uh, Raid Raptor lines. Like, you still have all of the Raid Raptor cards, bar like a couple, and you have the ability to basically just play Raid Raptors too. So this is this is essentially just another tool on top of your deck, where you, you really only need to add one card to your main deck to make this work, and it's a card that really doesn't take away very much from your deck because it naturally works with Raid Raptors. So I really don't think you're I don't think you're missing much, right? I think you're totally fine. Love the Kaliuga line. I think it adds a ton to this deck. Kaliuga, I think, is the space that I was I knew it was there, but I was underestimating how important it was to the deck. And I think now that I've played it, I've played around with it quite a bit. I think the Kaliuga really is an integral part of the deck. All right, getting into your first game here, and we're going to start off just a little bit odd. Our opponent's going to go for the Ash Blossom uh, onto our card there, which does suck a little bit. But again, we are literally a deck made of extenders, so of course we have a way to play through that. We're going to flip up our Phantom Knight, uh, Knight card. They're going to go for Maxi. Now, initially, I'm sort of looking at Maxi. I'm like, oh, shit. Well, I don't really want to do too much here. Uh, but very quickly, we change our mind. We're going to go ball state. We're going to go force uh, Strix. We're going to detach a card. We're going to grab our Bloom Vulture. Bloom Vulture summoning itself and the Mimicry out to the field. Now we're going to link summon into the way Strix using it a little bit early, but that's a-okay. Again, this was me initially trying to play around the maxi, but then I figured, fuck it. We're just going to go ball state. Going to go into the Brave Strix here. We are untargetable thanks to our 
uh, Raider's Wing. So if he does have a Noom Perm or something of that description, that's not going to do him a lot of good. Why is Strix going to set our rank up card? We're going to go for Magic Skip Force now. We're going to go into our Arsenal Falcon, just like before, Arsenal Falcon detaching a material from itself, summoning out the Noir Lanius. Noir Lanius then going to target itself, adding the Heal Eagle, just like our combo. Going for the Heal Eagle, linking to into our Rusty Bardish. Uh, going into the Bardish at a different phase than what we normally do, but that's A-OK. -okay. Ultimate Falcon coming out, attaching the Arsenal Falcon to itself. Uh, now we're going to go for the Ultimate Falcon's effect. Now your opponent cannot activate cards for the rest of this turn. Even if they have something to activate, they cannot use it. Grabbing the Strangolanius, we're going to summon a Strangolanius, going into another copy of Force Strix. Force Strix, detaching a material, activating itself to grab our Simorg. And now we're going to go for the Raider's Wing, detaching a material to summon itself. That's going to trigger Simorg to summon itself out of the field as well, going into the Gaga Gaga -ga -ga Magician. Gaga Gaga -ga -ga Magician is going to activate its effect, detaching the Raider's Wing, grabbing back the Arsenal Falcon, and here... Uh, we're actually going to go in the SP little on that, which is awesome. We can go in the SP on this board, which is fucking sick. Uh, Rusty going to send Raider's Wing, going to play our other Rikup Magic. And here's a mistake that we make here. Um, it, it doesn't matter, and you're going to see why it doesn't matter. But ultimately, you would have actually rather kept this card for now. And potentially nuke the board during the opponent's turn um, before using Kaliuga. So my sort of think thinking here, whenever I made this decision, I'm like, fuck it. I'm just going to summon the towers. And I'm going to reset it to the field to use his follow-up for later. And I'm also just going to rely on Kaliuga. So I was counting on not using a board wipe this turn. I was counting instead on just uh, using Kaliuga to totally shut this down. Because I feel like with a bajillion cards in hand, what's he going to do if he can't activate them? So we're gonna we're gonna go into this preemptively. If you really wanted to be like super min maxi about it, you probably would rather not do that until the following turn, uh, or even keep it for during their turn if you want to field wipe first. But you're gonna see why it doesn't matter here. Uh, we're gonna grab our rise up uh, racket magic again. We're gonna set it to the field, and we're gonna pass turn to our opponent. The first thing our opponent does here is Harpy's Fever Duster. Uh, now we can actually protect. Uh, our cards here, we're going to go for our rank up magic onto our Arsenal Falcon. We're going to go into Kaliuga. Kaliuga will immediately negate everything, meaning that Feather Duster is in fact negated. So while our rank up magic does not disappear, it can no longer be used thanks to Kaliuga anyways. So it wouldn't have mattered. Regeki negated. They're going to go for the horse cards. We're going to drop Max C from our hand to the graveyard. Of course, they're going to have a card to negate that, but unfortunately for them, the card that they decided to play to negate that is on the field, meaning it's negated. So they're under Max C now. If they had Ash Blossom, Sure, but called by is negated. Uh, they're going to go for King's Sarcophagus. Also negated. I actually, for some reason here, I decide that I'm going to wipe the board. That's another thing that you can do. You can activate its effect. You can quick play, destroy all spells and traps, which is fucking sick. Um, I just didn't want him summoning shit back from the graveyard. But then it, it sort of occurred to me that like, he has a billion cards in hand. He's just going to have another one. Uh, so that was a little silly of me, but it's fine. He's literally going to summon all these dorks back to the field, linking to an SP Little Knight. Um, none of this does anything. Going to special summon Dogmatic Ecclesia, the Deer Servant. I actually asked the Nadir Servant because I forgot it was negated thanks to Kaliuga. So ashing the Nadir Servant was not necessary, but we did it anyway. Consider it BM, do whatever. Dogmatic Matrix, also negated. Triple Tactics Talent, also negated. Uh, what else you got? Dogmatic Calamity? Also negated. Like... What, like, what do you do? Right? What do you do? <laughs> it's just game over. Kaliuga is one of the best answers in the game to Maxi. The reason being, it doesn't matter how many cards you have if you can't use them. Moral of the story? Kaliuga's pretty fucking good. <laughs> Already getting into our next game here. This is actually a game against you, Bell. It's one of those games where you kind of just trade hand chats back and forth for a couple of turns. Uh, we did have our one card starter in the Tribute Lineus. Uh, they're going to try an Imperm up. We're going to cross out that Imperm. I do not think so, but our opponent has another surprise for us. We're going to activate the Lineus just to get Gamut. Our opponent had the out. Sometimes you, sometimes, sometimes you got it, right? Gamma really hurts Real Raptors, especially because you no longer control a card. Of course, I don't have any extenders in hand, but if I did, I wouldn't have a Real Raptor on field to use them, which would be a problem. So we're simply going to set one pass. Our opponent's down two cards in hand. I've got two hand traps. They're going to go Veiler onto that Lotus uh, just to see if it'll slow down our opponent enough. They're going to go for Nightmare Pain, which they just happened to open, I guess. They're going to pop the Lotus. They're going to grab the Spirit of Ubel and deck the hand. They're going to shuffle back the Spirit of Ubel and their Lotus to summon out their Phantom. Simply ending their turn. Fair enough. 
Uh, so it's, again, like I said, it's going to be one of those games where we just kind of throw cards back and forth. Um, we simply end our turn. We don't have any plays we can make here. And they don't have a ton of advantage in their field either. They're going to go for the Unchained Cholo Sharvara. We're going to go for Effect Veiler onto the Phantom first to bait the Phantom into using its effect. And then once the Phantom uses its effect, we're going to go for that Maxi. So we did... Our opponent got, got kind of jibated there. I don't know what they were expecting, but they really did not want that to get negated. Um, which makes sense, I guess, ultimately, because they, they would want to pop one of their U-Bell monsters. It was less about pump negating Effect Veiler and more about popping a U-Bell card. Uh, so being able to draw an extra card off of that is nice, because our top card was Imperm, which isn't very good, but the Bloom Vulture is. We're going to Normal Summer, we're going to swing into the Sharvara just to put it into the Graveyard. Now it's in the grave, it can use its second effect to bring itself and the Tribute Lanius back out to the field. Tribute Lanius then going to activate its effect, sending Mimicry from the deck to the graveyard. Mimicry then going to activate its effect in grave. We're going to grab back the Strangle Lanius from our deck to our hand. Now we're going to exceed summon into the Raider's Knight. Like I said, we spent the last five turns trading hand traps. Our opponent's going to be out of negate, so we're fairly safe to go for this play. We're going to summon the Strangle Lanius. Now we're going to use Strangle Lanius, the second effect, to bring back the Tribute Lanius from the grave since we control an Exceed monster that had an Exceed monster as material. Grabbing the skip force directly from deck to hand we're going to target our brave strix ragging it up into the arsenal falcon arsenal falcon detaching in material to summon the noir lanius noir lanius then going to target itself grabbing the heal eagle from the deck uh special summon the heal eagle out to the field now we're going to link to using it and the arsenal falcon into the white strix white strix activating as well as the arsenal falcon activating at the same time arsenal falcon going to summon out from the extra deck our ultimate falcon while attaching itself onto um our ultimate falcon as material white strix then going to special summon the raider's knight raider's wing from the deck while setting our rise rank up magic we're going to go into the four strix now four strix detaching the material to get searching our deck for another winged beast we're going to grab some more now we're going to use our rise rank up magic right now we're going to use all of our monsters here to go into the raising rebellion falcon we're going to go into the falcon now because i want rid of that nightmare pain getting rid of sharvara is kind of nice too but i'm mainly concerned about nightmare pain and it means that next turn we can go into another field wipe uh, which i think is going to be infinitely more useful quick 2k damage to the face sending us a morgue i was actually paying um elbors at this time uh with some more cards you can play that if you want it's actually kind of decent um bit of a brick sometimes so i ended up taking it out but elbors is actually kind of sick um, into the Gaga Gaga Magician. That's going to trigger our Raider's Wing. We're going to detach the Arsenal Falcon, summon itself. Now we're going to go Rising Rebellion Falcon, detach a bunch of materials, target the Force Tricks, activate its effect, detach the last material, grabbing the Singing Lanius, which again is another extender that we just decided to cut, but it's just an extender. It's pretty fucking good. Uh, end of the Rusty Bardish. We're going to set our rank up spell, and now we're going to go for the Gaga Gaga Magician. We're going to detach a material, summoning back the Arsenal Falcon to set up for Kali Yuga. Just like that, we have uh, two huge towers. We have the Kali Yuga play, and we're going to have another field wipe during our opponent. Well, not during our opponent's turn because our field is full. Um, but we also have an Omni Negate in the form of the Glorious uh, Bright as well. We're immediately in response to the Dark Beckoning Beast. We're not going to worry about any of our trap cards. That's there just in case this for some reason goes to another turn. Into the Kaliuga. Kaliuga negating the Dark Beckoning Beast. Uh, they're going to shuffle back in the Phantom. The Phantom is just as negated as everything else, buddy. It's not going to work. Phantom of Bell is their last line of defense. I don't know what they were expecting to do with it. But we're simply going to activate... Sorry, we're going to link summon into the SP Little Knight underneath the Bardish. We're going to target with the SP Little Knight uh, to banish that back row here. Using the Little Knight, we're going to target itself in the Arsenal Falcon in order to sort of remove itself from the field here. Um, so Phantom is fine. SP Little Knight is going to technically banish, uh, sorry, destroy a Spirit of Ubel. Summons at Ubel. We're going to go, go uh, into the Magician, bring it back Kaliuga once again. Phantom Knight's going to pop the Kaliuga, so that's why we did that. We did that to remove the Exceed Monster from the field, so we could bring it back under the Phantom Knight to pop a card into the Terror Incarnate. We're going to summon out our Force Tricks into the Battle Phase. We're going to negate the Terror Incarnate so we can simply punch it in the face. You're negated, sir. 4k over the Terror Incarnate, and this is fucking cool. Our opponent is actually playing the Ultimate Nightmare, but we just happen to have another negate. Get the fuck out of here. And there you go. A little tit for tat at the beginning, you know, sort of throwing hand traps back and forth. You know, we've all been in one of those games. Uh, but once we got the card we needed, once we got the extender we needed, we were not going to be stopped. Excellent game. One more. I would not be a converged gaming video if I only showed you wins. I do want to show off some of the weaknesses of the deck. Uh, moving into a Centurion matchup, which was actually the matchup that we lost in my Ice Barrier video as well. Now that I think about it, Centurion's kind of got hands sometimes. 
I'm not gonna lie, most of the time they don't, <laughs> but sometimes they do. Uh, our opponent's gonna make some standard Centurion plays here, gonna summon out the Gargoyle, that's gonna trigger their field spell, Synchro Summon into their Auxilia. Auxilia then will search for a Centurion card on Summon Gargoyle, then adding himself back to the hand as well. Uh, so they're probably gonna grab one of their trap cards here, if I remember correctly. Uh, potentially the Banish Trap, Phalanx. Uh, yeah, Phalanx, yeah. Phalanx is a really good card in Centurion, and most of my Centurion hybrids I even play it, to be honest, because it's a great search, and it's not even a terrible card to just see in hand. Uh, it's a lot like the um, Phoenix Golem. We're going to go for the Bloom Vulture now. They're going to respond to the Bloom Vulture with the Premiera and the Trudea, not wasting any time in getting those two dorks onto the field. Going to immediately summon out Trudea as a level 8, Premiera as a level 4 tuner. Bloom Vulture comes out with the Mimicry. Uh, now we're going to go for the... Uh, Premiera and their field spell. I'm going to chain to that some more so we can put as many winged beasts on my field as possible. Summoning it out. Now they're going to Synchro Summon into the Crimson Dragon. Again, that animation is fucking sick. Fucking kudos to Konami for that. That's great. I'm going to like make that animation myself very soon uh, for my own videos, but that shit is fucking awesome. And now they're going to chain its two effects. We're going to shuffle back for Stardust Cypher Divine Dragon. This card is fucking sick, right? So there's people watching this that have never heard about this card before in their life. Stardust Cypher Dragon basically applies... It has two main effects. Number one, it applies a blanket once per turn protection effect to all cards you control from destruction. So the first time any given card in your field would be destroyed, it isn't. And that applies once per card, which is fucking awesome. Um, and then it also has a monster negate where you will negate a monster effect and then destroy one card on the field. So that gets around the whole restriction of like um, negate and destroy effects because if the monster you were negating and destroying couldn't be destroyed or if it uh, was in the graveyard or something like that, then it wouldn't get destroyed, right? Which would be a waste. Whereas this card negates the effect and then destroys any card of your choosing, which means if your opponent has another problematic card, or perhaps the card that you're negating uh, is at a location where you wouldn't be able to destroy it anyways, it means you can pop another card. So this is like a lot of value right here. Um, the downside of this compared to the alternative targets is of course that this can't negate spells and traps. Um, that's still pretty fucking good. I'm just saying, I'm a huge fan of that. I like the Stardust cards. I'm a fucking Stardust fanboy. Uh, into the Brave Shrek, so we're going to detach a material off the Brave Shrek, detaching the Mimicry so we can use its Graveyard effect to banish itself to get Searching. We're going to grab the Stranglenius. Stranglenius is going to summon itself out to the field. Now we're going to activate Raid Raptor Roost before activating our Skip Force. They're going to go for Centurion Phalanx. Kind of figures they would use that card about now. This is definitely the best time for them to use it. As uh, so they're going to banish our Brave Shrek, so our spell card fizzles. We're going to go for Roost, shuffling back three to draw one, hopefully drawing some kind of out to this board. Drawing another Strangle Elenius, we're going to normal summon Elenius before going into the four Strix. Uh, Roost then going to activate to grab us the Glorious Bright, which is at least a negate. We're going to use the four Strix to grab ourselves a Raider's Wing. Raider's Wing then going to activate detaching material from the four Strix to summon itself to the field before going into our Raider's Knight. Raider's Knight activating to detach a material and go up into the Arc Rebellion Dragon. Archibellion going to activate its effect that would negate all the monsters in the field so our opponent does decide they're going to use their safer dragon they're going to negate our, our, Rebe our Rebellion Exceed Dragon while destroying our four Strix so that is just another example of that utility I'd say fuck it this this game is over we swing in just wanted to show the safer protection protects his auxilia from being destroyed and that is GG's for us um Cypher Dragon, putting the fucking hurt on. That is sick. If I'm going to lose to any card, I want it to be a fucking anime-ass card. And to be fair, Cypher Dragon, I believe, is a manga card. Um, so for those who don't know, quick little bit of Yu-Gi-Oh! trivia. The, the Stardust Dragons and evolutions of the Stardust Dragon used in the anime differ massively from those used in the manga. So in the manga, you see things like the Stardust Chronicle Dragon and such, which were never featured in the anime. Uh, so I, I think that card probably comes from the manga. I would need to double check. But either way... It says Stardust, so it's pretty fucking cool. And here's the list. I gotta say, uh, I was enjoying Raid Raptor before when I made my first video. I really was. I'm having infinitely more fun with it now. Uh, now that I've practiced with it, I've done my research, I've done my practice, and I feel like I've got a much clearer, a more defined win condition. I feel like I'm winning more games. I feel like I'm playing more competitively. I feel like I'm not flailing around and activating cards for the sake of activating cards. I'm aware of my own restrictions. And built, having built the deck like this in accordance with that learning has really, really helped 
in not only helping me to enjoy playing the deck more, but also to secure a much, much higher win rate. This deck wins all the goddamn time. It is so good. Uh, so if you're looking to play it, I would highly recommend playing it like this. I'm going to remove the tech cards so you can get a look at the deck as pure as it can be. And then I'm going to talk about some of the tech cards and why we have included them. So we're going to start with our hand traps first and foremost. Again, I talked about this in my S Barrier video, double Veiler, double Imperm. Imperm is, I think, a better card, but the reason we play it half and half is because Veiler has the unique advantage of being usable after being drawn off of Maxi if you control a card. So if you're going first and you play your board and your opponent's going second, if you activate Maxi um, and you draw Veiler, you can use it. If you draw Imperm, you can't because you control shit. So I think Veiler is better in that specific circumstance, but I do believe Imperm's a better card overall, so I, I kind of split split the difference. Uh, so two and two for that reason. Uh, we've got triple Maxi, obviously. We got triple Ice Blossom because of obviously. Uh, we have double Call by the Grave for that reason as well. We got single Crossout Designator. We've got two copies of Forbidden Droplet. This could be any board breaker, really. Uh, Droplet I kind of liked because it put me in a unique position to utilize Bloom Vulture sometimes. Um, so that was pretty neat. Uh, it also allowed me to dump things like Mimicry Lanius and Raider's Wing from Hand to Grave uh, to get extra value out of those cards. So I really kind of liked Droplet and the fact that it puts certain key cards into my graveyard from my hand. Uh, but this could be any board breaker, right? Nib is a fucking phenomenal one in this deck uh, because of the fact that your boss monsters are unaffected um, by card effects. So you could absolutely Nib and your Falcons would be totally fine. They would be still in the field but all of your opponent's shit would get tributed. So Nib is also a very good choice for that, and I fucking love Nibiru right now. I think Nibiru um, is an awesome card. I think people aren't giving it nearly enough credit. So yeah, generic board breaker, let's say that. And yeah, that is your hand trap space. Uh, in terms of optional extenders, I'm looking at this deck. Ain't a lot of them, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, the only one really is this, the Phantom Knights uh, of Shade Brigandine. I don't mind playing this card, number one, uh, because it's a, it's a secondary target off of Rusty. So if I'm playing Rusty, and if I've just happened to hard open my rank up spell, I, I don't want to miss out on the value of Rusty, right? I still want to summon it because it chain blocks in the U-Bell matchup, um, but I don't want to just summon it for the sake of summoning it. I want to get some value out of it. So that's why I play this. And worst case scenario, right, if you open up of it and it's in your hand, it's just a level 4 extender that special summons itself. It's just an extender. Uh, the only thing you need to be cautious of is that it's not a winged beast, which means that if you're going to use it for your Raider's Knight to go into your Brave Strix, you just need to make sure that you don't detach the winged beast material from your Raider's Knight. That's the only restriction. Um, and that's just a case of don't be a, don't be a fucking idiot, right? So this card's awesome. It's really good extender, so I, I really don't mind seeing it in hand. In fact, I see it in hand more often than I use it off of Rusty, and I really do like seeing it because it helps me play through hand traps, and in general is an awesome card, but it being a secondary target for Rusty is just icing on the cake. So do with that as you will. Technically an optional extender, but I do really fucking like this card. Um, going through our main deck list, uh, we have Pain Linea. So this card is basically, it's a level one uh, Raid Raptor, but what you can do is you can uh, target a Raid Raptor you control that has a level, uh, you take some effect damage, but then you, well, while this card's in your hand, sorry, you take some damage and then you special summon this card and its level becomes the same level as the one you targeted. So it being a level one is important because of Noir Lanius. Uh, the way Noir Lanius works is that this card can target a Raid Raptor in your field to add a Raid Raptor from deck to hand with a different level. Uh, normally we're using that for the Heal Eagle, for sure, right? Uh, and that's great because this card's a level 3 and you usually link it off rather than using it as exceed material, which is perfectly fine. Uh, but if you're stuck in a hand with just Noir Lanius, or if you're in a position where you've already got the Heal Eagle, or maybe it's turn 3, turn 4 and you don't need the Heal Eagle anymore, uh, Noir Lanius being able to search for Pian Lanius means that it's effectively searching for a level 4, right? Because you summon Noir Lanius, it targets um, itself to add a level 1. Pian Lanius targets Noir Lanius, you take 1600 points of damage or 500 points of damage or whatever it is, and then you summon Pian Lanius as a level 4. Um, that's pretty good. It basically just means that this guy can also search a level 4, right? Um, plus, it's not a bad extender to just have in hand, right? If you just normal summon any of your Raid Raptors, again, target, target it with this, and then you just get to summon this card if you happen to hard open it. It's just another good level 4 extender. Uh, Heal Eagle is... Uh, mandatory for part of your combo so basically 
Uh, it's not as important in this particular version. The way it normally works of these decks is... So this guy can special summon itself, of course, if you control a Root Raptor, you search it off in the Marlinius. Uh, people normally uh, use the Raise Rank Up Magic card on their turn to summon out a Raising Rebellion Falcon, and then using Heal Eagle, you can actually banish the card for Graveyard to add, it back to, to add your Rank Up card back up to hand to then use again during your opponent's turn. Uh, I do like this card's ability to recycle the, the, the Quick Play spell, but not for that reason. Uh, what I would rather do is I would rather not use it on my turn I set it just the first time off of White Strix's effect. I go into my opponent's turn, I wipe their board, I do whatever. And then on my turn again, if they manage to set up something by the grace of God through Kali Yuga, or like if I just don't have the greatest sand board or whatever, if they manage to set up something, I can then use the Heal Eagle Recycle to add it back. And then I can use it for the second time to wipe their board again. So I do like the Heal Eagle Recycle. We do use it differently, but it's still really fucking good. For sure. Uh, Mimicry. Um, you ideally, no normally you just want to send this card to the graveyard for its search effect, but something that doesn't often come up, but it's very important to know, is that if you have this and another Raid Raptor in your field, you can activate this card's on field effect to boost all their levels by one. And the reason that's important is that if you have like Mimicry and Raider's Wing, uh, well, if you can just use Mimicry to boost them up, both up to level 5, well, you don't need to go into Raider's Knight anymore. You can just go directly into Brave Strix. Or perhaps you have already attempted to use Raider's Knight and you've been negated or something like that, and uh, you can use Mimicry's effect to go directly into Brave Strix under those circumstances as well. So it doesn't come up all the time, uh, but it is worth noting that he can modulate levels. Uh, Tribute Lineus is your primary starter. you got to run it at 3. I'm not going to spend as much time talking about the rest of these because these guys are the only real intricate ones. The rest of these are very much just please card on board, right? Uh, Tribute Lineus basically is your one card starter because it mills uh, the Mimicry to get searching for something else. Raider's Wing and Tergal in your combo. This card's especially awesome because it makes whatever it's equipped to untargetable, which is sick. Strangolanius is a free extender, plus it also brings a monster back if you control an Exceed monster that has an Exceed monster as material, so it's a double extender under the right circumstances. Uh, some more is a free extender. Noir Lanius is an extender, uh, but it's also an integral part of your combo. You don't really want to normal summon it, you want to see it in hand. It's not the worst card to see in hand, but you would really rather not, so we only play it at one. And Bloom Vulture is one of the, one of the best non-starters in your deck. This card is fucking insane. Special summon a two wing beast from hand, or if you haven't used that to card's effect, uh, you can bring back two wing beast from graveyard if you control nothing, like you saw in game number two. We had to take advantage of that secondary effect. This card's insane. Uh, one skip force for your main combo. Uh, Roost. Uh, you will ideally get access to this card during many of your two card combos. Uh, because you're not relying upon Mimicry's effect to fetch you an extender, if you're not doing that, then you can use Mimicry instead to fetch for Roost. And Roost is a pretty awesome card, right? It lets you, when you summon a Raid Raptor from Extra Deck, you get to grab a Raid Raptor Spell or Trap. That's normally your Glorious Bright, which is a negate. Uh, and it can also shuffle back Raid Raptors from Grave or Banish Pile to draw an extra card. I, the number of times I have drawn Max C off of this card is insane. Like those little draw one effects that some decks have, do not sleep on them because they will win you games. Uh, Phantom Knight's rank up is necessary for combo. Ray's rank up magic necessary for the combo. Shape Ring and Deem we've already talked about. And Glorious Bright is basically just a searchable trap card that is an Omni Negate. Just like the Hot Red Dragon Arch Fiend Abyss, you target a card in the field and negate it. And that's it for the main deck. Uh, getting into the extra deck, uh, there is a little room for playing around in the extra deck. I've seen some lists play the Exceed Requiem Dragons. I'm going to be looking into that in more detail in the future, so I may even revisit Raid Raptors again in the nearest future because their Requiem Rebellion Dragon is sick as fuck, and I would kind of want to play it. Um, but the current extra deck right now is two copies of Force Tricks. Really good, at least two, I think is necessary. You can play up to three if you really want to. Gaga Gaga Magician is necessary for your Kali Yuga lane. If you're playing Kali Yuga, you will play this card. Uh, Raider's Knight, you need it for your combo. Arc Rebellion Exceed Dragon, this is like an alternative target off of your Raider's Knight. Um, you do use Raider's Knight during your combo, but remember you can recycle it off of Roost, which you can gain very easy access to, if not on turn one, then at the very least on your second turn to recycle your Raider's Knight. And Arc Rebellion Exceed Dragon is a crazy card for OTK potential. Uh, Brave Strix, necessary for combo. Arsenal Falcon, necessary for combo. Kalayuga is like the entire point of this version of the deck. 
Uh, the ultimate pelican, you summon during your combo, fucking incredible boss monster, 35, unaffected. Used to be the boss of Raid Raptors, and I'm glad that there's still room for it in the combo of the deck. Very happy we can still use this card. And Typhon is technically a flex spot. Um, it is a flex spot, but given the extra deck restrictions placed upon this deck, and the fact that you're constantly sort of just doing Dark or Exceed, I think it'd be silly to not play Typhon as a fallback plan. Uh, because there will be, again, if you're going second, and if your opponent has, like, three interruptions, four interruptions, typically you can start to really fall behind. As much as you have a shitload of extenders, extenders help you play through maybe two hand traps slash interruptions slash negates, right? Uh, especially ones that remove monsters from your board make it especially difficult for you to continue extending. Uh, so in cir circumstances like that, you can either replace a bunch of hand traps with a bunch more extenders, uh, or you can rely on cards such as Typhon in tight situations to whittle down your opponent's board, put you in an advantageous position for the following turn, where you're bound to have just as many extenders to go through another shot at your place. Uh, double um, Rising Rebellion Falcon, this card is fucking awesome. Again, unaffected by all of our card effects, it's got 4,000 attack points. When it's summoned, if you control three or more Raider Raptor monsters of Exceed, well, sorry, when it's summoned, you just wipe your opponent's board, which is incredible. Uh, but if it had three or more Raider Raptor Exceed monsters with different names on it as material, which it almost always will, thanks to how you summon it, and uh, you also inflict damage to your opponent equal to the total attack points of all monsters destroyed, which is, again, fucking incredible that is so easy to go for lethal damage especially if you time it right you could just burn your opponent to death super easily um but more often than not it's taking advantage of either an already weakened opponent or it's setting you up to go into lethal damage not that you really struggle for lethal damage let's be real with a 5300 of beater here because this card will have its attack points boosted by the effect of the brave tricks uh as well as a 3500 beater here and the potential of having two of these dorks yeah, you're going to have damage. You're going to have damage. You've got hands, believe it or not. Uh, this card can also uh, detach three materials to target a Raid Raptor and Grave, and it copies that card's effects until the end of the turn. So if you summon this card, ideally you want to do it with four materials, uh, which you can do easily. You just need to make sure that um, the four tricks that you have on field still has a material on it. Uh, you can basically detach three to copy something else's effect and then detach your last material uh, to copy the effect of whatever it is you want to copy. So you can absolutely do that very easily. And in doing so, we'll also place in Graveyard all of the materials necessary for another shot at using your, your rank up card for your second Rising Rebellion Falcon. So do bear that in mind. It is really fucking good. <laughs> uh, Wise Tricks at one. At least one is mandatory. If you really want to, you can play more than one of this card. If I had more than one of it, I likely would. I'm not tripping over myself to get another one because i think you can very easily and comfortably play one copy um but i can i can definitely see a world where you would want to play more than one for sure you probably want to drop typhon for a second one to be honest uh sp little Knight because it's dark monster and it's really good and sort of uh it's it's a really good generic addition to your end boards uh you're not really going to be doing sp pass in this deck you can but you won't uh, more often than not, if you've got enough extenders, you're basically just going to tack Little Knight onto your M board. It doesn't do much, it doesn't really add a ton to be honest, because we're already using Kaliuga. Uh, so you don't have to play Little Knight, I could definitely see a world where again you cut it for another Raid Raptor card, just to give you more longevity. But it comes up, I like it, it's not a terrible option, so I'm currently playing it. And lastly is Rusty. Rusty is awesome, it sets up your Kaliuga, it... Uh, it can pop cards as well, like that little pop effect, I, we do use it to chain block Rising Rebellion, which is a function of it in the U-Bell matchup. Uh, definitely not worth sneezing at, so that's really good. But more, not more importantly, but worth noting is that on a regular basis, even like on follow-up turns or if you're going second and trying to break boards, that uh, little exceed pop effect can really be very, very useful. It comes up more often than you would expect it to. So um, Bardish, very, very good card, I would say. Um, almost a must-play in most versions of the deck. And that's pretty much it. That's the whole list. Uh, if you got this far into the video, and of course you enjoyed watching, make sure you're subscribed to catch more stuff as it comes out. I will likely be doing another Rude Raptor video using the Requiem Dragon, because that card's pretty dope. I know a lot of people want to do that. And those same people probably aren't the people who want to play Kali Yuga. So if you want a version of Raid Raptors that is playing pure with negates but isn't playing Kali Yuga, I'll probably do that. 
The Requiem version may also have Kali Yuga. I don't know. I haven't played it yet, but I'm really looking forward to doing that. And I want you to see it once I do. So if you want to catch it, make sure you're subscribed, like this video, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.